the most uh, pressing matter is that um, the Humboldt extension is like really close to being done. So we, we, we maybe have one more meeting and tie up some details in like our implementation experience guide and it's ready to submit. Except that we have, there's one like really problematic issue and that was um, Twitter and I'll, I'll refer to that a little bit later about how to handle complex multiple values. So I'll talk about this in just a moment. So that is why this is like a really pressing issue. Um, and I think this is also related to Latimer core, although I haven't dug into Latimer core enough and hopefully our Latimer core <laughs> representatives here can help to um, explain what the relevancy of this is. But um, so those are, and Latimer core is also in its later stages. So I see this as something uh, that needs to get worked out in the near future. So that's kind of why I consider this to be a pressing issue. Um, the, the big picture is that we for any kind of data serialization to be interpretable as, as having the exact same meaning. And I mean like the structure in terms of like the links between the things that are being described and the semantics by which I mean we understand what the terms mean are easy properties. So typically like Be clear about the semantics. We simply give the full IRI of the term, right? Because the full IRI of the term refers to the term metadata, which has the the normative definition. So, when we put something like um, DWC colon habitat, we're not just talking generally about the um, what the general public thinks about habitat, but we're talking about the exact semantics of the term habitat as it exists in Darwin Core. So, and, and one thing that some people either aren't aware of or forget is that when we write like DWC colon habitat, that's actually just an abbreviation for the full IRI for the term. So when, if we just write the word habitat, it doesn't necessarily have meaning, whereas if we say DWC colon habitat, um, it means habitat in the exact context of how Darwin Core defines it. So you can see up here in the in the JSON example, like this would be, um, so if, if you're trying to describe um, an event and you could describe it in JSON, and this is probably like how a developer would do it, and a developer probably wouldn't want to have to say D in the name or key or this key value name value pair in the JSON, they'd probably rather not have to say DWC colon habitat, they'd rather just say habitat. And similarly, people who are writing stuff in spreadsheets, they also would like to be able to just put habitat as their column header without having to put the DWC in there. Um, but this, you know, the problem with that is then we we sort of are missing the semantics part. So how do we is there some kind of ancillary information that we could include that would make it clear that when we say habitat in this context here, that we mean habitat as in the Darwin core term. So that's how, that's sort of the semantics issue. The, um, the issue of being clear about the links between the things that we're talking about. If you do this in RDF, which is basically a you know graph language, then it's very clear what the relationships are between like the subject resource, which in this case is an event, and then the values of these different properties. Um, but people don't understand or like RDF, so it's kind of unreasonable to expect them to do that. Yet we would still like for to be able to understand both this JSON and this um, this. CSV table in terms of what it would mean in RDF. So, so what I would, I think our goal should be that 
any serialization that we have should be interpretable as an identical graph, basically, with the same semantics and structure. So that's kind of like the underlying issue, and and that's and that's why I am kind of mixing this up. We have a very specific question that's being asked to us um, by the Humboldt Extension team, but the kinds of solutions that are required to answer their question are also come up in the context of like JSON and how we structure that. So it's unfortunately a big ball of wax to mix together, but I think it doesn't make sense to think about, you know, how we represent things in JSON and how we think about things in delineated text or CSV files separately because the, the, the issues are shared among those, um, those two things. Um, okay, so as if any of you saw my um, talk that I gave a couple years ago, Adwig, about how we should just get um, Sauron to come in and make everybody use JSON LD and take away their freedom. <laughs> That's basically what I'm advocating for right here. Um, now that I'm effectively in the role of Sauron now as the tag coordinator, I can maybe just make that happen. Um, okay, so anyway, um, so if you're not familiar with JSON LD, basically JSON LD is a way that you can create JSON that can be turned directly into RDF. So it carries all of the um, contextual meaning for us to have clarity about the properties that we're using as the names or keys in key value pairs in the JSON. And so like maybe the most straightforward way would be to put uh, for your keys to put like DWC preparations. But the problem is, as I said before, like get, if getting a bunch of developers to agree that they're gonna put like DWC colon in all of their keys is probably not reasonable. They're probably not gonna wanna do that. Um, in this example, we know what DWC is because there's this context node up here where we say DWC means rs.tadwig.org slash DC slash uh, DWC slash terms. So that basically explains to people who never heard of Darwin Core, what does DWC colon preparations mean? Well, it turns out there's a trick um, and I was uh, crediting IIIF version 3.0 for making me aware of this trick. And that is to, to basically define the exact meanings of the keys or names that you're using in a JSON within the context. So instead of in the context, just saying generically, what does DWC mean? In our context, we can, we can explain what every single Darwin core means with Darwin, Darwin core property means with respect to its full IRI. So if we create a context section like this, we basically redefer, we redefine the name preparations and say specifically, it means the Darwin core terms for preparation. So if we do that, then we can just use preparations down here in, in our uh, data JSON, and we don't have to worry about putting in DWC. Now, again, getting a bunch of developers to agree, like we're all gonna put this context node in here that we don't understand and we don't know how to construct, that's probably asking too much. But it turns out, that you can actually take this context node and just put it in a separate file. And then all you have to do is have a single name value pair in your JSON that refers out to that external context. And that will get, that will impart the meaning that we want on the names like preparations through reference to this external document. So what this would mean is that like if we created a big giant context document that defined what every Darwin core term meant, then all we would have to do would be to tell developers, hey, we're just making this one little ask. Can you follow the, the structuring guidelines that we give you for, for um, multiple values and things like that that we'll talk about later and just stick in this extra key value pair. You don't have to understand why, just do it because we told you to. And if people would do that, then they could write the JSON that they want and we would still 
completely have the semantics in, in terms of the meaning uh, for the terms. And it's actually great because one of the issues with RDF is that like there's a distinction between um, whether something is an IRI value and whether it's just a, a plain uh, value string or does it have a data type or does it have a language tag? And those are all, again, things like asking developers to language tag things or put in, uh, um, well, this is an IRI and this thing is not an IRI. They just want to put strings in, right? But that kind of information can be included in the context. So if I say in the context that the term recorded by has a type of at ID, that's basically indicating that this is an IRI. And so when I uh, it convert this into um, RDF, it's like completely valid. So even though to use most users having multiple values that are IRIs and having multiple values that are strings, they're just a string in quotation marks. But from the standpoint of being clear about the semantics, we can we can make that clear in the context. So it seems to me, and, and in the, um, there's a document that, the second document that I uh, linked at, in the notes, I, I go through kind of a systematic characterization of how um, you would construct JSON-LD context um, and then represent them as JSON for various categories of complex values. And I'm not gonna go through all those now in the interest of time. But basically this was an exercise to convince myself that this strategy that I'm proposing here would actually work and that it would allow developers to just make relatively simple JSON and not have to worry about you know, how they explain what the context is. There is one dicey problem here. So like the, the most straightforward solution is to just take the term local name and in the context document explain like what the term IRI is. And if it's like supposed to be a, an IRI, then we add this extra little bit here saying that its type is ID and we're good to go. And so for vocabularies like, audio, like uh, audiovisual core, where there are term analogs for IRI value terms and literal terms in, in audiovisual core, there's actually different local names for that. So if we want, if we have a term, the term provider, and we want um, to indicate that the value is an IRI, we just use pro AC pro colon provider. And if we want to indicate that it's a literal value term, then we have to say AC provider literal. And so that's all straightforward. But the problem is in Darwin Core, we made this design decision, I don't know, five or six years ago when we wrote the RDF guide, that instead of having different local names for the IRI and the literal value terms, we would use the same local name, but we would use a different namespace. So, um, Example, for example, recorded by DWC recorded by is in the um, DWC colon namespace. DWC IRI colon recorded by, which is the IRI value term, is in a different namespace. But they both have the same local name recorded by. Well, the problem is we can't, def in this JSON context, we can't define uh, the local name to be an abbreviation for the IRI for both of them because both of them have the same local name. So we would, so if, if I had thought about this, when there was basically a discussion about which of these two approaches we should use for Darwin Core, and we opted to sort of follow the example of Dublin Core, which was to use two different namespaces. And now I kind of regret that because that introduces complication here, but I suppose we could just, uh, um, we'd have to tell some developers like, hey, if you're going to use the IRI terms, you have to say recorded by IRI if you want the IRI value term and recorded by if you uh, don't want to do that. For like audiovisual core, we're not going to have that problem. So this is like really the only issue that I see with adopting this approach, this um, external JSON LD context approach as a general pattern, design pattern 
for representing Tadwig metadata as JSON LD. Uh, now there is one other complicating thing, and I, I want to talk about this um, a little bit more carefully because this is going to raise its ugly head when um, we uh, get into the tabular data issues. So, and this is like the actual issue that the, the uh, well, something relating to this is is similar to the issue that's raised by Hummel Core. So. In Humble Core, we have this. Uh, we or let's see. Actually, this is not Humble Core. Sorry, this is Darwin Core. There's the terms sa sampling effort value and sampling effort unit, and there are analogs of this in in Humble Core. And if, so, if you have a single value, that's all cool. You just um, use sampling effort value, and you give the value as a um, as a number, and then the unit. You uh, you just use a string for the unit. Uh, of course, there's a recommendation to use controlled values, and that complicates things. But we'll just look overlook that for right now. Um, so the problem is, what do you do if you have multiple values? So it would make more sense to um, to have the term link out. To an array of values, a JSON array of values, and each of the the um, values then would be a JSON object that um, basically uh, describes the um, the measurement uh, by its value and its unit. And so, um, it, using uh, terminology I've heard Dem, uh, Ben say a lot of times, we're what we're basically doing here is we are linking to another class. We are linking to we're linking to a measurement class. And each of these data object here is an instance of that class. And if you look at my sort of abstract categorization, I have uh, like a, a graph diagram that shows you what the situation is, but um, you can look at that if you're if you're interested. So here's a very tidy solution, and it's cool because it uses the inherent structuring of JSON to make it very clear what the relationship is between the subject resource, which in this case is an um, uh, an a um, an event, and these values here. But one of the problems is that. Um, the terms are defined as sampling effort value for the value term and sampling effort unit for the unit term. And if we're going to adopt this approach, then yeah, we yeah. have to have a third term that was just called sampling effort that we would assume is going to have a value that is um, an instance or instances of measurement. And right now, this is a design pattern we have not had so far in Darwin Core. So, like, if, if we were to adopt this approach, then we we need to have some rules about um, well, if we, anytime we have something with value and unit, there's an alternate term that doesn't have value and unit in just the first part of the term local meaning sampling effort, and then we'd have to define or borrow separate terms for somewhere else. To impart the meaning of what is it value, what does value mean, and what does unit mean. So, from the standpoint of like structuring the data in JSON, it's very straightforward. From the standpoint of what precedents do we want to set about um, about uh, term names and analogs? This is a, a opening a whole new ball of wax um, that we that we don't currently have. Another issue, and this is an issue again that Ben has talked about in some of the work that he's done, is what do you do? Do you always require there to be a JSON array here? Like in some kinds of serialization, if you only have a single value, you don't need to have this square bracket with the array. You can just simply have the JSON object as the value. But then developers, if they're going to consume these data, they have to have one routine that looks for single values and another one that looks for um, arrays of values. And so 
in some cases, I think in the case of like triple IF, in this situation, you just say the value always has to be an array. It could be an empty array, it could be an array with one value, or it could be an array with multiple values. And so that might make sense in this situation. But then do we do we provide two alternatives? Do we say like, hey, if you never have a more complicated situation, you can just use this sampling effort value and sample effort unit? Or do we say like, okay, we're going to facilitate um, the broadest case and say, we're not gonna have these terms at all. Everybody just has to use sampling effort, but then you have to have this more complex structure. So <clears throat> this is, these are some of the problems that are, that are arising with multiple values. Um, okay, so fielded text issues. Uh, there's one issue that I brought up in the document that I'm just going to skip over because I don't want to get off on a tangent because it's not the the burning issue that we have right now, and I'll just refer you to the document to read about that. But basically, the, the the burning issue that we have with fielded text is the the situation that we were that we we're um, just talking about. So when we were in, in Humble Core. And we have this effort value sampling effort unit. And that's fine if you have single values, but what if you have multiple values? Well, the typical design pattern in Darwin Core is that you put a space and a pipe or a vertical bar and then another space to separate your multiple values. The problem is that how do we know we, we have two sampling effort values and two sampling effort units? How do we know which one goes with which? Now we could just make a rule and say like, okay, when you parse this out, the first one goes with the first one and the second, goes with the second one goes with the second one. Um, and maybe that's the, the simple solution. I don't know, but that would, that would basically require us to impart a rule that does not exist for other Darwin core terms if I'm correct. In other Darwin core terms, I don't think there's any implied ordering to pipe separated values. Um, and this would be basically a new thing. So one of the solutions that would follow a design pattern that we already have in Darwin core, um, so the dynamic properties um, term suggests that we can just stick JSON in as a value. So I call this the JSON in a box solution. So what we would be doing here would be basically going back to this pattern that we have here. And instead of you know making it look pretty like I have it here, you would just cram it into the box here. So if this uh, uh, JSON were being generated by a, an application, like you know, this is a, an issue that eBird has. So if eBird were providing this data and they were, you know, using a script to provide these values, this is probably cool. If we had some people who were like manually editing Excel spreadsheets, expecting them to be able to construct JSON like this without making any errors is probably asking a lot. The other problem is that we have the same, the same issue that I just talked about here. And that is, do we allow for the single value um, column headers, which would be sampling effort value and sampling effort unit, and then just say like, hey, we have an alternative thing called sampling effort that doesn't have value and units stuck into the um, term names. And if we, if we leave that last part off of the local name of the term, then that's assumed that you're gonna use this JSON solution. So um, I think this is like, has some possibilities, but it, it also has some problems. So what if we don't go with the JSON in a box solution? Oh uh, yeah, here, here's the other problem. Um, I, I gave like the simplest example that Humboldt Core has, but they also have a, a, even worse examples, which is needing to associate the target scope for both taxonomic um, target scopes and lineage target scopes. So for example, in this particular event, 
it targets all life stages of this, um, what is that, family. But for these families, it's on, they are only targeting larvae and juveniles. So how do we, um, it, we have these target scope, uh, target scope value and, or, sorry, taxonomic target scope and life stage target scope. Those have to be associated with each other's in pairs. So how do we do that? Well, we could use this approach where we just say we have a generic term called target scope, and then we break this out into taxonomic target scopes and life stage target scopes. But then we have the same problems that we had before, which is that we have different terms, target scope generically, and then a taxonomy and life stage like subterms, as opposed to having taxonomic target scope and life stage target scope as single valued terms. The other problem is that this is even worse. There's no possible way that somebody is going to type this mess into a spreadsheet. So we really would be committing to having to have some kind of tools or something or else just tell people like, hey, if you're a human, don't bother using this structure here because you're never going to be able to type it in a spreadsheet. This is only for big providers like eBird who have more complicated data. Um, the other possibilities that I could think of is to say, okay, instead of trying to cram um, all of this data in the box as JSON, let's just use the pipe thing, but instead of um, like, like having something that's uh, unclear, we would use like some kind of an ID term, and this doesn't really follow the pattern, any existing pattern, but we can have an ID that basically links out to a separate table, since we're, we're basically saying, um, this is linking out to a measurement class, and we basically have a measurement class table. And then we have these pipe separated values that, that lead to rows in that other table, and then we would have uh, unit values. Um, this is really kind of backwards to the typical way that we that we link tables in Darwin Core. And so I'll, I'll show you the, the like normal way in a minute. But this again has the same problem that we had here, which is that Humboldt Core wants to mint, um, they want to mint sampling effort value and sampling effort unit, unit. They're not talking about just having a basic sampling effort thing, nor are they talking about minting a term called sampling effort ID either, unless we tell them they have to. This is not something they've even talked about. So it would involve and then we have the question is like, okay, well, do we allow people to use either sampling effort value and sampling effort unit or sampling effort ID? Or do we tell, no, actually, we don't want to even have these terms. We just want to have one term and we're forcing everybody into the multiple table solution, which is more complicated than most people care about. Um, now, the way that I'm using this ID term here is really kind of counter to the way that it would be used in like a Darwin Core archive. So in a Darwin Core archive, you basically have um, you have a protocol ID term that would link from this measurement table back into the core event table, and so the um, protocol ID would be like the primary key for the event table, and then in the extension measurement extension table, this would basically be a foreign key that links out to this row in the core table. But of course, <laughs> that is complicated. So I'm not sure. And, and, and you'll notice that there isn't the sampling effort um, terms aren't even in here at all. They, it's in, instead, you would be having like a protocol ID term. Um, and the fact that these are sampling efforts would somehow have to be implied in like the meta XML file that uh, describes the relationship between these two tables. So, um, so this is, a, is kind of more like the normal way of doing things in Darwin Core, but it like completely blows up the idea of even having sampling effort terms because we're basically getting rid of them in favor of adopting a more complex uh, data structure model. Okay, so um, 
that's a lot. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I think the the issue about like how do we do how do we deal with JSON isn't really uh, the problem um, that we need to fix at the moment, but the kinds of solutions that we would come up with for complex values in JSON are related to the same kinds of issues that we have in serializing them as tables. And, and as I said, optimally, we'd want to be able to translate back and forth between these two um, approaches. And if we adopted the JSON in a box solution, that would be relatively easy to do, right? Like we'd have some rules about, about um, column headers. And then if it's a complex value, we would just suck the JSON out of the box and, and put it in as a, um, as a value in the JSON and vice versa. In other words, this solution would make it really easy to go back and forth between serializing in JSON and serializing as table but it is a different approach than what we've used so far in Darwin Core. Um, and just, I'm gonna end this and open this up to discussion, but these, this problem is not unique to the Humble extension. We in, audio, in audiovisual core, we have the same problem. We have um, regions of interest, which are complex values that are linked to media items. And right now, we have some kind of like hacky examples of how to deal with this in JSON and tables, but we don't have a coherent strategy for it. And I think in the case, uh, and you can correct me on this, um, Rob and Ben, but I think in the case of um, the uh, Latimer core, it's more or less described as JSON and not as tables, right, currently. And so then the question is, how do you serialize this standard that's described basically as JSON? How do you serialize it as tables? And I'm, I'm not really clear on what your strategy is for that. So anyway, there are multiple places where getting to the bottom of this issue are important. And so with that, I guess I will just um, open it up to questions and uh, comments and suggestions.